Hi, and welcome to Optic. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the iPhone and about um, the Nikon D750's incredible Wi-Fi capability, which, um, which I found very easy to use. I'm going to go through a lot of material fairly quickly. I talk relatively, absolutely fast. And um, just take notes. If you have any questions, just drop me an email. And please bear in mind that short emails get answered immediately. <laughs> it's true. Here we go. Let's talk about um, the iPhone Imaginarium. Yeah, it's good stuff. It is the ultimate sketch pad. And we will see why here as we go along. It's fantastic. We can do whatever we can imagine these days. Photography is not what it used to be. Why the iPhone? It's always with you, obviously. It's spontaneous. We'll see examples in a second as to why it's, it's you'll take shots with this that you wouldn't take time to grab your camera and get a tripod. It's much more spontaneous. We miss a lot of shots because we don't want to get our camera out. This solves that problem. It keeps your head in the creative game. You're in a checkout line, you're in traffic, you know. It's something to do and it's fun and it does translate over into other aspects of your image making. It flows across various platforms, the whole thought process. And these can be printed. 24 megabyte plus is the file size. So it's pretty, um, pretty big. Let's have a look at you know, what I call spontaneity, shots that I wouldn't take ordinarily. Here's a few grabs. How's it done? Any ideas how this is done? Any ideas at all? I get into my car and the sunroof is open, but the window is still over it. Right? I'm thinking, yeah, that's kind of interesting, you know. And blue sky, white cloud. I'm not going to get out of the car and go get my camera. I got the iPhone, great. Took a few shots and drove off. That's a great example as to the spontaneity of the capability of the iPhone. Big cameras can be intimidating. With the iPhone, people don't pay attention to you. It's fantastic. So I'm waiting for a gesture on the uh, ferry from uh, Lewis to Cape May, where we teach every year. As soon as she pointed, I got one shot, and that was it. Normally, your photo ops are quick and limited when shooting very spontaneously. We're, we're in a part of Iceland called Week, spelled V-I-K, uh, pronounced Week. And we're leaving. And this lady went into the water. I guess she wanted to experience Icelandic water. I really don't, but she obviously did. A little chilly. And uh, if you blow this up, you can see detail in her face. It's an amazingly sharp camera in the iPhone from 5S on. 5S, 6, 6 Plus. Amazingly sharp camera. We'll discuss apps as we go along. OK, so this is the typical situation right here. Kids are playing on the beach. I've got a camera to my right uh, shooting an eight-minute exposure. So that camera's dead for eight minutes. So get the iPhone out. Grab little shots in here. I'm waiting for these girls to stop and do something more sequential. So they stopped going crazy, started walking one after the other. I said, great. As soon as they cleared the pier, I got one shot. With no iPhone, I wouldn't have gotten any shots. So it's also a great second camera while you're doing your longer exposure. You can go in and play around with uh, the iPhone. Family breakfast, <laughs> place called the uh, Lost Dog Cafe in Folly Beach um, outside of Charleston. I asked them, took a shot of your dog? Yeah, sure. So I go back, I do this big circle so the dog doesn't see me, come back behind and just make a sound, like a <laughs> turn around, one shot. That was it. Turn around, smile, turn around, ball game was over. So it's quick. Spontaneous, pretty good stuff. On this particular day, there's a, a series of railroad cars outside of Cape May that we like to photograph a lot. And uh, this is a very great set of cars, very colorful paint, beautiful rust, it's very abstract. Uh, and it's wet because it's raining. Getting the, getting the 105 out on a tripod with an umbrella and moving through 50 shots is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. With the iPhone, no problem. The image stabilization in the iPhone 6 Plus is phenomenal. You can shoot in a little lower than perfect light, and it does give you that extra shutter speed or two to shoot this razor sharp type stuff in very low light. Just walking along, oh, there's one, one down here, just one after another. 
check it into our hotel in, I believe, Bozeman, Montana. I'm not going to let Sue unpack the car by herself. So, I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, run around, take one quick grab, and start unloading the car. Things that I would not set up with a tripod or a bigger camera. Someone sends me um, a text. How's the color in Magnolia Gardens? It's like this. Take one shot, send it away. Real spontaneous, just real quick in the moment type of stuff. I like working like that. You can focus up to maybe like four or five inches with uh, the iPhone. Good for flower photography. Again, the image stabilization in the 6 Plus only, it should be in all of them, but it's not yet, is pretty amazing. It does give you one extra stop or two to allow us to get these shots. Conservatories aren't very bright. They're very overcast light almost. They're very dim as far as the, uh, as far as the, uh, the amount of light goes. How's it going? All right. Good. Grab a seat. Thank you. So it's um, good walking around camera. And I say camera because it is. It's a very high-end camera. And you're breaking bad fans here. You're kidding. One? OK. OK. Then we'll go past this. This is like uh, season one, episode three. This was shot in Albuquerque. Seen with Jesse at the doghouse. The tail goes at night. The neon lights. Anyway, that was a grab in, in Albuquerque, known as the ABQ. There's my lovely mom. I'm an only child, so I take her around everywhere. And, and uh, obviously, when these glasses went on, my lights went on. It's like, OK, all right, this is the shot. Again, my big camera's not with me. The iPhone is. I say to the eye doc, give me like five seconds. So I get up, take two shots. She couldn't stop laughing. Stop laughing. She couldn't stop laughing. Took two shots, and we got this probably could be a very successful stock photograph. Again, without the phone, it would not have been shot. Some more mom for 90th uh, year of checkups. <laughs> I love using mirrors as a prop. Whenever I see a mirror anywhere, I try to use it somehow in the image. Again, getting the shot, holding the camera down, then looking up and getting mom and me. She has no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> this is our, um, it's like something out of a, a Devo DVD, you know. That's our portrait. The car is not moving. We're at a stoplight. And I'm like shooting. That's not it. Shooting again, moving over. Finally got one that I like. The repeating profiles kind of make this uh, a, a family, family shot. <laughs> Are you shooting with the front camera or the rear camera? Uh, the front camera on all of these. I'm just holding it out. Although I could have used the back camera. I wasn't even thinking. Yeah, could have used the back camera. Taking a stroll around the city. Um, if your primary goal is to walk, you don't want to carry a big tripod and a camera and every five minutes set up and avoid people. All that stuff's a pain. With the iPhone, it's not. Because you can take your picture and process it later. That's like OK. But I know enough about the apps. I've done it enough for years that I know what I can get out of this. So it's a good subject. Over a futuristic look, really dramatic sky. All this, these are all shot and processed in the iPhone only. No Photoshop yet. Not till no, not at all. All shot in the iPhone and processed. Shot at the MoMA, I believe. This is OK. Went back in later and reprocessed it. A little darker feel. The eye is going more toward the subject now than all over the place by the use of a uh, vignette around the edge. It's the same techniques as any other kind of visual design. You want to drive the viewer to your subject. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinhole camera, it doesn't matter what it is. These are only tools. OK, we have Auto Painter, which replicates styles of famous artists. Sure, why not? You know, something to do. Put that on a layer, and the sky was actually white. The sky was white. How do you get textures that you have on your computer into the iPhone? Common question at, at the, the iPhone parts of our workshops. Um, I use flypaper textures. They're sitting on my computer. You can also shoot your own. How to get them into the iPhone to use. Email them to yourself. Simple as that. Boom. You have them. You can also do a wire. My preferred method is wireless transfer, where I send them from the phone to the computer, or vice versa, from the computer to the phone at, at the full res. So I have them. 
And then if, you're, um, if you use iTunes, if you're fast on iTunes, pop it into a folder and then bring it in via iTunes. Easiest way for me is wireless transfer. There are many transfer apps. I use one actually called Transfer App. Really easy. Easy to do. My poor man's Van Gogh. Sure, why not? You know, hey, look, nobody gets hurt. You know, I'm not selling this as an art forger. You know what I mean? I'm just having fun here. That's all. Something to do. Smug Mug says up top, an app is called Camera Awesome. That'll be in your list also if you ask for it. Smug Mug is a very elaborate uh, app of a lot of like you know uh, uh, features to optimize the image, borders, textures. The whole thing, very involved, very comprehensive. It's also very good. Shot in Cape May, New Jersey. All right, at the very top, which you can't read, I'm sorry, says Snapseed, comma, glaze, comma, image blender. A lot of times I will do an image, optimize it in Snapseed, take the same image, unprocessed, and optimize it in glaze. Glaze you will see in a few minutes. Image blender has each one in a corner with an opacity slider. You move the opacity back and forth, you get a blend. There's also blending modes. You can use uh, the same ones in Photoshop, multiply, screen, dark, and light. They're all in Blender. Again, this is literally Photoshop in your pocket. Not kidding. And moving on. OK, shot again with Snapseed or replace it with uh, uh, Stackables. Snapseed, I'm sorry, Snapseed and PhotoForge or Snapseed and uh, Stackables. Um, this is a classic PhotoForge texture in the background. And the abstract feels pretty cool. I'm just trying to find a, a clip art of a uh, melting clock, you know, and, and pop it right in there. That's a typical Mextures texture. That's the name of it, M-E-X-T-U-R-E-S. Mextures and Stackables are two of the best texturing apps in the iPhone land. Just fantastic. Very expressive, very personal, extremely good. Fun to use, high quality. This is an HDR shot with the flypaper texture placed in the sky here. The sky was white. I actually enjoy white skies now because of that. Used to hate them, now they're great. Okay, the salient part of this image is Snapseed, which has control points, just like Nix Viveza. Put a control point on the truck, the yellow part right there, pushed up contrast, saturation, structure. Push all of that up to make that truck pop out of that little window or, or that, uh, that doorway there. Control point ops in the Snapseed are amazing. They really are. I know these names sound silly. That's called Jixi Pix, J-I-X-I-P-I-X. They have the most, uh, most elaborate set of filters for the iPhone. It's an entire suite of filters. I use the same four or five over and over again. But people use other ones also. It's also available on in Photoshop, for 100 bucks, you get an entire litany of like these filters that are made to work with very large files, gigabyte files, 100 meg, that kind of thing. So one set for the phone, different set for the computer, and, and they're tremendous. You will see me use Artista Haiku, it's called, a lot, on a separate layer. That's what glaze looks like. Think of acrylic paint. It looks kind of dark up here, I'm sorry, but it's very bright where I'm looking, but it looks like a uh, has a feeling of like uh, acrylics, like that kind of bright, colorful, very thick kind of feel to it. You can see it here, more the, the three-dimensional effect that it gets. It's a fantastic app. It's very complex, easy to use, but there's a lot in there. That, that's a often used layer in my iPhone processing. It's kind of crazy abstract. Anyway. That's an old car somewhere in South Dakota. And the reason that it looks like it's coming off the page almost, the relief in that is intensified by going into Snapseed and pushing up st uh, structure and st uh, sharpness all the way up. And that pushes those little, can you see it back there? It's kind of hard to see, but it gives it a, a relief. Like those maps, the globes, where it kind of comes up a little bit. I get that kind of feel to it on, on my computer anyway. All right, this is, uh, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't read it. Haiku and Glaze and Snapseed. That is an often used combination of iPhone apps that I use. 
those three. Layer of haiku, layer of glaze, and then snap seed everything. Um, you can see it's kind of the haiku effect in the back. You'll see it more pronounced a little bit later. Um, see the edge blur, how it's very sharp in the middle? That's a function of Snapseed. Let's move on. Here's my Leroy Neiman car shot. But the haiku effect is what's going on back here. It's very abstract, and that effect is brushed out of the car. And again, it's a little bit contrasty, but it is what it is. Okay, one of the uh, great uh, uh, power plant structures in Iceland. That's just great raw material, just foggy, misty, very low contrast, gives you a lot of leeway to go in and really juice it up. Add the texture, more of an industrial feel, again, using glaze, Snapseed, and PhotoForge, or the app we call it Stackables. This actually shows the haiku effect in the background. See all that modeled stuff? That's actually haiku. This has more of an illustrative effect where you're going beyond a straight, like all of these are, going beyond a straight image. I always add stuff to the, uh, the iPhone uh, sketch pad. It's like, why not? Why not? Average Camera Pro for multiple exposures. Yes, it can do multiple exposures. Um, I just did one uh, on the platform down in Baltimore coming up here. Uh, that'll be online. It's online right now, actually. Um, where it shows you, for example, we look for situations. On the platform in Baltimore, across from where we were standing, people were like standing still and they were like milling. And the train was very, very slow. So I shot an eight multiple exposure. What you have is like a lot of ghosting and it's people standing still. Gives you that contrast. So it's a, you're kind of a neat image. I kind of like doing that, shooting longer exposures or multiple exposures. If some people are still, some are moving, like a Great Central Station, per perhaps. You could do it there. Some are standing still, some are milling around. Do a multiple exposure there. Uh, the great Bob Christ, who spoke uh, yesterday, actually, uh, you know, Bob used this in a mobile phone article for Condé Nast about um, a long time ago, <laughs> about four or five years ago. And it shot with, with the Hipstamatic app, which is pretty nice. It's a straight camera app, she's in square format, it's got nice effects, and it's actually sold. That's Cape May Lighthouse. So you can make money at this. When I scout for workshops, I will always take the iPhone out. If we're midday, just checking out things, leave the camera home, bring the iPhone, we leave it in the car, and grab scenes to show people what's, what's happening at our location. And then I process it on the way while Sue's driving home. Shot in Lake Erie, not our Lake Erie, the one over on the West Coast. Look how dark it is in there. That's all done on the iPhone with Snapseed, with control points. Open that all up. Pretty flat day in Zion National Park. There's a cool app called Brushstrokes. You can go beyond photograph into more illustrative more non-photographic type renderings. I mean, why not? Nobody gets hurt. We're all running out of time. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Come on. OK, one second exposure at Penn Station in Baltimore. I got the iPhone braced against the post. One second. The app, which you can't see, is called Slow Shutter. It gives you long exposures. For example, shot in the Great Smokies last week. I've, uh, I picked this, this, this is an eight second exposure. It is not handheld, rigor mortis is not set in yet. Uh, but you can get, uh, and, and I'm sure B&H has these because I bought, like bought two here myself. It's a uh, stand for the iPhone, tripod mount by a company called MeFoto, M-E-F-O-T-O. It's called the Sidekick for the iPhone 6 phones and smaller, and the Sidekick Plus for the iPhone 6 Plus size phones. Um, it's tremendous. It's the best mount of its kind. Keep your case on the phone. You just pop it in, tighten the edges up. You can move it, change formats. It's perfect for this kind of photography. I love composites. That's where we take one shot of our basic backyard, about a mile from where we live. Nothing shot, but 
there's a lot of raw material, a lot of empty space. And then I went in, went to a square format, and went into mixtures to find a nice, warm sky. And then went one more step further and made it the uh, Florida Everglades. <laughs> I mean, why not? Why not? You know, you can make up landscapes in your head. Why not create them? Who gets hurt? You know, it's good for you. And there's a movie. We saw this before. Same link. Continue copying if you like. So there's first two and one more will reside there. Again, HTTPS, then triple W, and then YouTube.com slash user slash photo photo TS2. Give it to my channel. They're all right there. And we have one more. This has some mirroring, some masking. It's got a, a fake Milky Way. Who cares? Who cares? These are not going to National Geo. They're going into my like phone to have fun with. You know, it's a different way of thinking altogether. There's a movie on that also. The entire process, front to back, all of these are about eight minutes long. So there is quite a bit going on that we really can't cover here because of the um, short amount of time. OK, this is my latest new cool stuff. Reflect, Alien Sky, and Circular are, are by the same company. And Tiny Planet is the same thing the Circular does by a different company, just so you're aware of the fact that they're the same basic app. So something like this shot in um, Ocean City, New Jersey. I kind of like it. Went into Snapseed, brought some color up a little bit. Foreground's OK, but what if I want to get a little bit beyond the pale and drop in a um, reflected foreground? Yeah, you know, it's like fun. It really, really is fun to see this thing come together and you thought of it, it's your own creation, and it's based on shots that you take. It's based on imagery. You're just going in there and, and doing some voodoo to it, you know. I-95 through Richmond. There's no Richmond Lake. Well, there is now. You know, there is now, why not? You know, yeah. So we have the newly uh, Richmond Lake. There you go. You're the first to see this. And then we took that and made a planet out of it. This is the fun stuff. When you go beyond and just start asking yourself, what if? What if I drop in uh, circular or drop in tiny planets? See what that looks like as a, a circular, circular subject. For those who know what tiny planets are, they're, they're an entire genre of photography. They go beyond the iPhone. We have like a, a, a panoramic gear that does it on the big camera. So little planets aren't limited to the iPhone. It's a really fun thing to do. It's just easier in this platform. Indiana Farm, little planet, why not? Inverted planet, they will invert it. They'll flip it inside out. OK, raw material, perfect. Negative space in the sky, clean subject, simple foreground. So. We'll drop in a little reflection in the water and drop in the app called Alien Sky has these great star trails. But it's missing something. It's missing something. It's missing one more step. What if I take that in, into a, a little planet or a uh, circular effect? That's got about a million hits on, on, on some social media thing. It's like, how'd you do that? What is that? I like that response. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> you know. That's why we have workshops. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So going one step beyond, you know, why not try anything? You know, it's just, it's just wide open. OK, different foreground. The same app, the same app. Reflect has a, uh, that icy foreground, like frozen lake. And then an alien sky, and we drop in our planet silhouette. And that's our first shot of the day. Just like that. Easiest shot in the world. Three quick steps. Johns Hopkins Hospital, I didn't like the floor. So I flipped it upside down. This is the floor, the wall. Why not? But we have this really bad floor now that will drop in some bricks. And now we have, with a couple silhouettes back here, a very viable stock image for a uh, Silicon Valley uh, uh, annual report. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but I'm, I couldn't be more serious. I do a lot of pans. I love panoramics, always have. 
The onboard camera on the iPhone does 22 mega, uh, 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 megabyte, 24. He's got to follow a line all the way across. It's a very long format. It's fun. That's Port Judas Light, which is over here. These are all the, the, uh, the outhouses there. Perfect pan shot. You start seeing things in panoramic format. Some beach houses, beach boxes in uh, Cape May, New Jersey, or Wildwood, New Jersey, sorry. And we have Kohimar, Cuba. Ernest Hemingway is old to hang out with a bunch of apps, one called Painteresque, a couple other ones. But that is an onboard pan. Classic pan is an app that gives you a panoramic window. It looks like a panoramic when you look in the camera. And the file sizes are fairly large. That's our bent house in the Palouse, Washington State. Fits in that format perfectly. A little texturized going on there also. And then we can shoot a straight image and then do one in an, an app called Aquarella. It's a Jixi Pix watercolor painting app, which looks fantastic. And then you blend the two and find a middle ground. And then we're going to move on. Stitch pans, just like in real life. You shoot a series of verticals, you stitch them all together using Photoshop, Photo Merge, or whatever. On the iPhone, the app's called Auto Stitch. It does the exact same thing. This is a 360. It looks like this. 360. Stitched together in, in, in Auto Stitch. In Iceland, <coughs> this guy lives in a good spot. Weather goes around him. Smart. One of the best hotel rooms ever. And, um, gee, where was that? Uh, um, Jacksonville. Just an incredible room. I said, look at this scene. I couldn't believe it, you know. We shot that every way possible. Big camera, small camera, iPhone, you name it. <laughs> Great city scene. Very lucky to be there. They were in Nampa two years ago. Okay, multi-row stitch pans. Anybody who does any serious panoramics knows that multi-row is, is like where you want to wind up. It's like shooting across and then across again, and as far as you want to go, like a tic-tac-toe grid. They have a much larger feel when you do that, you're starting way down low and pointing up each time. A really good tip here, bracket mode shoots a plus and a minus, okay? If you shoot a, a, a shot like this, Capitolio in, in uh, Cuba, in Havana, I'm shooting a lot of like, you know, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, like 50 different shots, maybe like 100 and some images. If you drop all of those in, unprocessed, Auto Stitch will blend all the HDRs and stitch them together. Real nice time-saving device there. One of the great waterfalls in Iceland, again, double, double row stitch with the <laughs> iPhone. These are all shot and processed in the iPhone. Now, this is great. That is a great app, gives you a lot of formats, and again, it shoots in TIFF and their proprietary iRAW. They're large files, they're printable, they're marketable, they're incredible. So, uh, it can shoot in squares, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 6x9", 6'12", 6'17", you name it. You just select the format and your window adjusts to that format. Have you pulled that one up lately? Have I pulled that up? Yeah, I pulled it up today. Okay, because it was coming up to something weird a while ago. Not my problem, sir. Well, I, mean, I, know. <laughs> I know, I know. They added something to the back of it. I'll look at it later. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay, we're going to move on. You see the quality is pretty astonishing on these things. That's, um, I like the uh, 617 pan a lot, 6x9, 6x12. That's uh, old Shelton Church outside of Charleston. 360 inside of there, using the, uh, the uh, MiPhoto deal. Just, just spin it around, 180. Taking a stroll through uh, Magnolia Gardens in Charleston. Again, scouting for our workshop. That fit perfectly. It's the 617 pan fit that scene perfectly. I couldn't believe it. Everything just seemed to fit. Beautiful scene at one of the small Audubon swamps in Charleston. And the ex Folly Beach. Last hurricane took the beach away. It's just a regular, like a plain, like a playa. Nothing's there anymore. But it's good raw material for a texture overlay. I like a lot of negative space for texturing. That's me, sorry. It's what a bright, sunny day. Like a mountain, we can make our own weather. 
true. There it is. That's a bright sunny day in Charleston. And uh, the mansion, Magnolia Gardens. This is my primary panoramic camera in life. If I want to shoot a pan, I grab this, not my big camera. Because the quality is, is phenomenal. Another classic pan from uh, Charleston. You can also buy lenses. Send me an email. Uh, check this out online. Moment Lenses. Moment Lens makes it 18 and a 60. Super wide, short telephoto. The image, the, the image quality is great. Uh, you can only use certain cases with it, but um, it's the best lenses I've ever seen uh, 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 for the iPhone. Just amazing. Moment Lens. That's just do a search. Okay, we're shooting it here. I can't wait for the sun to go in. It's no problem. Got back in later that night and got rid of it with this. Touch, retouch. Content aware for your iPhone. Now the fun stuff. That, was, that wasn't the fun stuff. With the Nikon D750, we can export. They have a, a private Wi-Fi from the camera to your phone. No matter where you are, middle of nowhere. Private Wi-Fi network. And you can send images from the camera to the iPhone. Why on earth would you do that? The iPhone does not shoot 10 multiple exposures. The iPhone does not have a 600 millimeter f4 lens. Doesn't have a fisheye. It's not very good in really, really low light. You know, and, and, and you can transfer a JPEG or the full res file into your iPhone. That's why I say get the most storage possible. And it's sharper and it looks better online. And the main reason, because it's really cool. <laughs> it is. <laughs> OK, let's have a look. We're going to move in right behind the camera. And here's our Wi-Fi. That's actually in the setup menu, although it says it's in the, uh, my menu here. It says network off. Click to the right. You'll see enable. Click up to that. Hit to the right. That's the camera part. Boom, you're done with the camera. Next to the iPhone. And again, there's no sound. I'm going to try to do this live. I'm sorry. It's a good thing I know it. OK, now, where's the iPhone? Let's see where we start here. It's going to start. OK, we go to our settings, and we find the Nikon network, which we just set up. It's going to research it, come back again. And there'll be a check mark. Then we know that we have it. Then we'll come down, scroll over to our Nikon app, Bottom left corner, click on that, and then it'll say View Photos. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back. Click on View Photos, and we're going to go back to Pictures on Nikon D750. We'll click on that. And then you'll see, right, where we have our second card. There's two SD cards, which is a great feature in a D70. I'm going to click on the Folder button right there. You can't see it folder icon goes back and it shows us our slots. Slot one, slot two. We did all of our work on slot one. So we'll click on that and there's slot one. So we click on a picture. We can either check mark it here. We can scroll through all of them this way. But for the sake of brevity, we'll check mark that and then click up here and go back and then check mark another one. We'll select it and check mark that and then we'll go back. And we'll scroll down, find, doesn't matter, grab an image swipe somewhere down around there. And then we'll check that. We have three selected. We click on select, and then a download word shows up. You click on that, and then it's pretty much done. To download your files, yep. You hit yes, and it downloads all three images. At that point, you have it. That's the process. It is the cleanest, fastest way that I've ever seen, and I've tried a lot of them, to go from a camera to a Wi-Fi. And we'll go back to our Photos folder, and they just came in. And there, here they are. Okay, That's called the, uh, the Grotto and the Smokies. That's an image overlay in camera that you cannot do on the iPhone, and the image swipes look much better on the camera than on the iPhone. And again, I'm saying something here. Let me see what did I say about the, yeah, about the, uh, Using like wide angle or like things that are not possible on the iPhone to bring those in from the camera, just a great idea. And it's a great feature. The image quality is fantastic. So we can move beyond this now. 
show you a few examples. OK, here's a few examples. From the D750 to the iPhone 6 Plus, image quality is really beautiful. When I'm using this camera, I don't take iPhone pictures. I just import the ones that I like from the camera. That's the grotto area. Just razor sharp. You can't tell if it's like razor sharp, very bright. Again, sorry it's so dark down here. And then we have the swipe, which is, looks like the real thing. The iPhone cannot do this. Cannot do it. If I want to send an image to a client, I want to send them something like this. Not possible on the iPhone. And then we texturize it a little further using the uh, um, brush strokes app. More of a painterly feel to that. This is also shot with a big camera, brought in and optimized in several layers of glaze and a little bit of Snapseed selective contrast adjustments. Oh, I'm sorry, it's so dark. This is all very bright green back here. <coughs> straight shot, straight import, no processing. You see the strains of like poison ivy here, the, the, the little strains. It's razor, razor sharp. The iPhone file is 8 meg. The D750 is 24.5 meg. No comparison. No comparison. The smaller sensor is noisier. That's brought in from, again, into the iPhone. Unattainable. Shooting with the iPhone. Really nice shot from the smoke. It's again imported. Very, very dark. I mean, it's darker than usual. But these, these clouds, these kind of scenes in low light are very noisy. On a smaller sensor, it's even noisier. So even if I could shoot that with the iPhone, I would not. Because it, it wouldn't look good. It goes beyond what works with the iPhone as, as a best case scenario image. So shooting it with a big camera and then bring it into the, to the retina screen on the iPhone, it looks fantastic. One more. It's going to look very dark. I'm sorry. But that will be extremely noisy on the phone. You know, and this is very clean from the iPhone. So again, you will send it off to a client, send off a more higher quality file. Whatever, this is the way to do it. And just brought in one of our great mornings in the Smokies last week, two weeks ago. There's, well, I'm sorry, it's so dark. There's, uh, we brought this in and then took it into Snapseed. Snapseed has a, uh, a function called Glamour Glow now. And I just applied Glamour Glow, like in Nick Color Effects. Just applied Glamour Glow to this to get the, to get the final shot. Again, I'm sorry, it's extremely dark up there now. And that's our final shot. Basically, it's brought in a lot of stuff done to it. That's a straight shot from D750 that uh, is brought through several layers of glaze, some other uh, uh, Snapseed optimizations, contrast adjustments, a small little vignette, um, some masking, etc. cetera. It's the exact same thing I would do in Photoshop, the exact same thought process, the exact same workflow as in Photoshop. Pretty amazing, really. But the most important thing, I love saying this, it's my favorite quote in life, the most important thing is a quote by an old engineer called, named Albert Einstein. You guys know who he is, right? Imagination is more important than knowledge. And I live by this. I believe it. I've experienced it. And thank you very much. Thank you. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.